Busy hand spray paint with a stencil, glue, then glitter, then write with a marker. Holding Held Productions. We remember Kayla Moore. A drawing of a beautiful, fat, smiling brown woman with a pompadour, holding up her fingers in a peace sign. A banner over her head reads, We Remember Kayla Moore. Text around her head says, April 17, 1971 to February 13, 2013. Poet, singer, sister, daughter, genius, friend. Black trans woman with a mental health diagnosis killed by Berkeley police in her own home. They tried to blame her death on obesity. Shame on the Berkeley Police Department. On her shirt, it says, Justice for Kayla. A beautiful fire in a backyard pit in slow motion. There are marshmallows Kayla. being roasted over the fire. Kayla. The fire dances passionately, slowly. <laughs> the fire's healing warmth is engaging. Kayla. Kayla. The fire weaves up and Kayla. down. Kayla. 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 Hands turned towards the warmth of the fire. A black woman in a green dress speaks to the camera at a crowded event. She's wearing a Kayla Moore Justice pen. Um, hey, tell me your name and why you're here today. My name is Marie Moore, and I'm here because I'm representing Kayla and speaking for her. She was killed um, almost two years ago, February 12th, um, by Berkeley Police officers. And, you know, since then, we've, we've had really no resolution to this issue. We Know, every opportunity we can to, to speak about Kayla's situation, we will because it's so important. Because she did nothing wrong. You know, Kayla was mentally ill. She was transgender and African American. She was living in Berkeley. Um, she was born and raised in Berkeley, and came back. You know, this was her home. This was her stomping ground. So when she came back, we were so excited because she was going to be close to us. We could keep an eye on her. You know. Um, and she was near her family, the people who loved and cared about her. You know, and Kayla was a beautiful person. She was all about giving blessings and, you know, if you had a problem, she's like, we're going to send out blessings for you. Um, she helped people. You know, that day she was cooking uh, dinner for her friends. That's what 
what she wanted to do. She took care of me. And, you know, that night her friends realized she was having, she was a, a psychotic. She wasn't making sense. But she wasn't violent. She wasn't aggressive. She wasn't suicidal. Just off of her medication. And when the police arrived, um, her friend called, you know, the police. And when they arrived, they tried to arrest her. And, you know, Kayla's mind, why are you arresting me? I don't understand. Let me go and call the FBI. Because, you know, she thought she had a direct line to the FBI. So she went to make the phone call, and the cops were after her, and that's when the struggle ensued. And the next thing you know, six officers are on top of her. She's face down, and she's telling them she can't breathe. And after two minutes of this, of her being silent, they realized that she was dead. So, you know, the situation should have never happened. Police, first of all, should not be the first contact for someone who's having a mental health crisis. They're not trained, and they don't have the skills to talk to someone, to de-escalate them, or even to just have a conversation. That's all it took that night, was a conversation. And they could have just said, you know what, you're in your home, you're fine, we're going to leave you be. That's all, but you know, the officer wanted okay. to... Yeah, we had to come in and... Assert their force, and you know, they treated her like a criminal. And they have never been held accountable. The police review commission is just a joke. I'm sorry, they are inadequate enough. They let this go on past the statute of limitations. So even though one of the officers is found was held accountable, nothing would ever come about because they waited past the statute of limitations. So it's all a very systematic little way of letting the police do what they want. You know, we have a chief that will do nothing. Um, our mayor. Uh, just poor leadership. So, and this is, it, it's happening more and more when you see what happens with Mike Brown, Eric Gardner. It's happening, it's becoming more um, in the media, but we, we need to keep this going and this dialogue going because it will continue. And, and people are getting upset. You know, our family is hurt. Our family is broken. My dad is broken. We will never get over this. And we just want changes made. We want 24 hour, 24 7 mobile crisis. We need more mental health services in Berkeley. And it's not just Berkeley, it's a nationwide issue where mentally ill people are being sent to jail to get services. So they're being punished for being mentally ill. So, you know, it's, it's something that we need to bring awareness to. And, you know, like I said, Kayla is just a sweet spirit. She really was. Uh, and she just wanted to be beautiful. She just wanted to live her life. And she wasn't able to do that. Caleb's dad reads to Maria and her. They are all huddled around a small book sitting on a couch. Dad is in the middle with one child sitting on each leg while he reads. The first one is a young Maria, and she's wearing a black and white horizontal striped shirt with black pants, holding her hands to her face and enjoying the pictures and the story that her dad is reading to her. The second young one is wearing a blue long sleeve shirt with some sort of unreadable design. That person is Kayla. She has her dad's arm wrapped around her, keeping her on his leg while she is holding the book. There is bright r room lighting. Dad seems to be enjoying himself. Kayla looks disinterested and her younger sister feels like she is enjoying herself. Kayla in seventh grade. She is smiling and wearing a white button-down shirt and black suit jacket with short, black, curly hair. She is smiling wide, yet is wearing an expression that is pensive or reserved. Kayla is wearing a horizontally striped peach-colored dress with black belt at the waist, white leggings, and with white jacket. She is posing in a squat position with a dog's head in front of her, holding an arm up and clutching a piece of money in her hands. She's wearing big hoop earrings and bright blue eyeshadow and giving a big smile. There is low light due to camera flash. She looks victorious and like she had a great night. Kayla stands in the middle of two femme people who are family members. The first person is wearing her graduation cap and gown with diploma and smiling wide. It is Kayla's sister. Kayla is in the middle wearing a black blouse with white pants, green t-shirt on the inside of a black jacket, clutching flowers by her mom's head. The older femme person is her mom. She's the last in the line and is wearing red glasses, white button down shirt, black pants, and black purse. 
She is holding a program. They all have expressions of happiness as well as pride. Kayla is holding Bella pressed, pressed gently to her chest in a seated position. Kayla is kissing Bella's head and wearing a red Mickey Mouse long t-shirt. Bella is wearing a onesie. Soft light comes in through the window behind her. There's a feeling of deep love for her niece emanating from Kayla. Kayla holds her baby niece Bella and is smiling and looks like she's enjoying every minute with her niece. Kayla is wearing a blue sweater. She has long black braids with specks of blonde and is smiling. Bella is wearing a pink floral onesie while Kayla's grandfather looks adoringly at Kayla and niece. Grandfather is smiling wide and wearing a white button-down shirt with suit jacket. The lighting is overexposed due to flash and Kayla and Grandpa are smiling and looking at Bella. There's a feeling of love being passed around from Kayla and Grandpa to Bella. Bella is looking back at them. Fade up to a colorfully chalk sidewalk that reads, Loved Ones Lost to Police Violence, with names written in hearts. Kayla Moore. Misty up here. Jackie Salius. Shay Taylor. Danny Spencer. Joe Nelson. Hearts with the names Kayla Moore and Adrice Stelly and Kendra James. Alex Nieto, Daniel Corporubis, Demoria Hogg, Yvette Henderson, Natasha McKenna, Tanisha Anderson, Sharice Francis, Mario Woods, Raymond Egret, Philip Highbeer. Disabled loved ones lost to police violence. Darnell Benson, Caden Clark, Jeremy McDowell, Victoria Ariano, Paul Castaway. We see these words in hearts, fat, disabled, schizophrenic, chronic illness, trans, black, loved one, Kayla Moore. Disability, solidarity, and fades to black. A tall pink protest sign with red letters and hearts reads, Obesity did not kill Kayla Moore. Berkeley police did. When Kayla Moore is free, we will all be free. Kayla Moore's wrongful death civil suit finally comes to trial in October 2016. There are opportunities to get involved. Please contact Berkeley Cop Watch for more details. Get plugged into the Kayla Moore justice struggle via the Justice for Kayla Moore Facebook page run by her family. Kayla's violent death is detailed in the written people's investigation, viberkeleycopwatch.org. Send in love to the family and friends of Kayla Moore. Video by Colin Ashante and Lisa Ganser. Pencil drawing of Kayla with images description by Nomi Lamp. Fire Song for Kayla, Andre Chaplin Thompson, Crystal Chaplin, Nomi Lamb, Shamika Gagne, Mayanna Welty. Photos of Kayla, Maria Moore. Photo image descriptions written, performed by Colin Ashante. Audio description performed by Crystal Chaplin. Interview with Maria Moore, Reagan Brashear. We Remember Kayla Moore is created as a part of the Andres Stelly Foundation's Manifesting Access. This movie is intentionally more accessible. It is captioned and audio described. Please share widely. Copyright 2016.